بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Today in our presentation we are going to discuss foreign body aspiration. First of all we need to know that the foreign bodies which we are going to talk about are not microscopic ones. We are not going to talk about bacteria and germs. On the other hand, we will talk about physical things. Things that we can see, that we can touch, that we can feel. Small pieces of food, small toys, and so on. Actually, foreign body aspiration is a very common and important clinical condition in clinical practice. Mainly it occurs with children between six months and three years old because they like to uh, discover their environment through their mouth. That's why it's mainly happen in children. But also it can occur in adults, but for sure it will be accidentally. We will discuss the topic through a clinical scenario. We will talk about the anatomical point of view. What are the main structure of the, of the trachea, the bronchi? What are the places most likely the foreign body will go to? What is the importance of the size of the foreign body? What is the importance of the position which was taken by the patient at time of aspiration? After that, we'll talk about the physiological point of view. What are the physiological responses and reflexes the body will make trying to go back to homeostasis? And also, we'll talk about the biochemical point of view, mainly We'll talk about the oxygen saturation. What will happen to the oxygen saturation? What are the complications that may occur? Asphyxia, hypoxia, and so on. And also we'll talk about the first aid procedures that must be followed in case of foreign body aspiration. Because as we know, this situation may occur at home. So we need to know and we need to be familiar how to deal with it. This is our clinical scenario. Simply it talks about a 60-year-old boy who comes to the pediatric outpatient after 20 to 30 minutes of being shocked by a small piece of watermelon. As we can see here, at the time of admission, the patient was almost normal. All his vital signs were almost normal. But this does not indicate that he is okay and no further complications may occur. Now I'm done with the introduction part. But have you seen these? My seminar colleagues will distribute these to the students. It's, uh, I believe it's a kind of contribution from our seminar group to help you in, during your studying in a high vacation. It has the calendar and some schedules for each subject that you can write notes and you can have notes and the number of the lectures so you can ask your uh, your uh, professors after a vacation. Thank you and now we'll talk about the anatomical section. Okay, this is, uh, now I'll talk about the anatomical section. And, and anatomical section we have three main points. I think the structure and positions and size of the object. Let's start with anatomical structure. As we know, the, uh, the airway tract uh, tract divided into two uh, main uh, sections. We have upper the uh, upper tract, uh, upper upper uh, airway tract, and lower upper uh, lower uh, airway tract. The upper airway started from, uh, from nose, pharynx, and end uh, at larynx, and the lower uh, continue uh, from uh, larynx, uh, from larynx to the uh, trachea, from nose, and to the anterior terminal root. Trachea. Uh, as we know, trachea started from the at level of C6 and the sternal of angle or angle of lowest at level of T4 and T5 
uh, then divided divide into two main bronchi, main and left. As we know, the, the right uh, main bronchi uh, is more uh, shorter and wider and more vertical trachea, not like the left one, it's lower, lower longer and uh, make an angle with the trachea. So usually for everybody, when it comes to the, to, uh, to the bronchi, Usually go to the uh, go to the uh, right main bronchi, but uh, as you know, that's in adults. But uh, in children uh, under 15 years old, uh, the diameter of two uh, bronchi uh, being the same, uh, and this uh, actually this uh, there was a discussion with uh, our professors. But uh, to check this information and to check that from uh, textbook of the uh, Athletics Partners. Uh, as we talk about main, uh, main bronchi, we have secondary uh, bronchi with three in the right and two uh, the left, depending on the number of the positions. As we know, the importance of the project that uh, make an uh, important uh, job uh, is uh, that uh, block the larynx during eating and open during uh, respiration. So usually, every, uh, every foreign body in Hali, it go to the uh, to the GIT. But uh, when there is a problem with the project, sometimes the foreign body go to the respiratory tract and to the trains. So that what make it critical, critical to, to be uh, found, the I mean foreign body in the form of uh, We have uh, standing position. As we know, stand, uh, standing position in the, in the patient, at the standing position, the usually foreign body go to the lower lobe in the right lung. Uh, and that's uh, uh, again supine, supine position. The patient lies uh, on his uh, back and uh, face up. So this again, and, uh, uh, usually falling body goes to the lower knee. At wrong position, when the patient lies on his uh, on his uh, abdomen and face down, usually go to the middle loop at the uh, at the right one. But sometimes, sudden, the foreign body go to the left lung or to the uh, uh, to the upper uh, lobe of the right lung. Okay, size of the object. The size of the object is the major if, uh, factor that make the location and deep of foreign body in the respiratory uh, respiratory tract. <coughs> so uh, sometimes, when the, when the when the size of the object. Uh, uh, big, that will uh, stop at the uh, level of trachea and make our obstruction. But if it's smaller, it uh, will uh, uh, stop at level of private bronchi or secondary or in the uh, different uh, branches of the bronchi. Now I will leave the stage for further to talk about this. Now we will talk about the aspiration of foreign body from a physiological point of view. These are the subtopics that we are going to talk about. We first we will talk about gas level, we will talk about the mucosa and what is action, we will talk about size and detection of the foreign body, and finally we will talk about the complication that can occur uh, of foreign body aspiration. First, we will talk about the gas level change. As you can see, ABG is uh, it stands for arterial blood gas. Arterial blood gas will change because the oxygen uh, being as, uh, aspired is, uh, uh, is deficient because of the obstruction. So uh, normally these are the normal values uh, of the arterial blood gas and we will see a change in them. The change will be decreasing O2 and increasing CO2 partial pressure. When we come to exam, we will find that the change in O2 levels uh, are detected way before changes in CO2 level. Can anybody tell me what? Repeat the Repeat the When we come to measure these levels, 
we will find that the O2 level will be detected way before the change in the CO2 levels. عندما لما نجي نشوف التغيرات في في القياسات راح نشوف تغير في في الاو في الاكسجين قبل التغير في السي او 2 بفتره. صح لا از يو كان سي سي او 2 از مور ديفيوزبل ذان اوكسجين سو ذا تشينج ويل نوت بي ديتكتد از كوتلي از اوكسجين. Let's talk about the mucosa. The mucosa when in contact with foreign body, the normal action will, will secrete mucus. The mucus, as we talk in histology, contains uh, uh, leukocytes which will, will try to attack the foreign body. Let's, uh, let's talk about signs and detection. First, coughing. Coughing is a, is a very important <laughs> physical uh, response. What is the definition of coughing? Coughing is a physical response to inhalation exposure of thermal, chemical, or uh, mechanical engines. What is the purpose of coughing? Well, the purpose of coughing is simple. It's trying to uh, prevent the foreign body from reaching the lower part of the tract and at the, same try, uh, at the same time trying to get it out of the body. What is the mechanic? The mechanic of foreign body uh, of uh, coughing is uh, quite simple. First, we have the arch of uh, reflection. The foreign body is a stimulus. It will stimulate the receptors in the, in the wall of the respiratory endothelium. The receptors, uh, the, uh, the receptors will transmit the signal to the center. The center will process it and then will transmit six, uh, signal to, uh, to affect the organs, which in, uh, in turn will do the action. The action done. First, you will have inspiration. The glottis will open, you will have inspiration. Second, the glottis will close. We'll have contraction of the muscle. Usually, expiration is a passive process. We don't use any muscles in it. But in this condition, we need to uh, have a forced expiration to remove the foreign body. So you, the, the chest area will, uh, will decrease in size. You, it will be like a balloon pushed from down to up. Then uh, there will be a sudden open of the glottis. The air will burst out, and hopefully the foreign body will be removed with it. The coughing reflex is a helping reflex for cilia. Cilia is also trying to get rid of the foreign body, and cilia, as we studied, is a, 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 a microscopic projection in the, in the wall of the respiratory tract. Sounds. Sounds are very important in examination to locate the place of the foreign body. But keep in mind, sounds are not definite. You cannot count on sounds only to know the place of the foreign body. So what, what are the sounds that will show? Uh, uh, of course, the sound is wheezy. The, the reason of the sound is that the foreign body will narrow the airway. It's like whistling. When you, when you narrow the airway, you will hear a musical sound, which is called wheezy. Uh, if this sound is in inspiration and inspiration together, if you can hear it while the patient is in inspiration or expiration, the, then most likely the foreign body is in the lower tract. Uh, but if you hear it only during inspiration, it's most likely in the upper tract, and it's called stri uh, styroid. Strider. Strider. Finally, cyanosis. Patients with narrow airway will, uh, will have cyanosis, and cyanosis, as we defined uh, in previous seminars, is the bluish coloration of mucous membrane and skin. <coughs> now I will leave you using chest x with uh, using chest x to detect with my brother Fitz. As my brother, I can say, in every patient come to our clinic, the first thing the doctor will do is auscultation to uh, examine his chest and uh, to see where the wheezing to detect the foreign body uh, location. After that, to detect the foreign body location. Uh, after, but it's, you, you can't judge because uh, wheezing. Uh, sometimes uh, can the cause of asthma. Uh, you can't uh, judge if that there is uh, actually a foreign body or his uh, illness. So we, you will send your patient to the X-ray. How can you use? X-ray and detection. Anybody knows? As we can see here, this is normal. 
This is not an X-ray. For a patient, if you take it, uh, here is the one, and uh, you can see here this is the medicine, and this is the black area. It's air. In our patient, uh, to detect the foreign body location. You will ask him to do full expiration. Then you will do the x-ray. You will notice that this lamp and this one should be uh, shrink. And the mediastinum shifted to right. That, that means there is a, a collapse and air traffic in the left lung as you see here. Uh, then you will uh, send your uh, to do the bronchoscopy afternoon. The result of it. Complication. There are many complications uh, cause of uh, foreign body. Many times it depends on the size and shape. Where is it located? Uh, I will talk about the most important complication. First, pneumonia. What's pneumonia? Anybody knows? Pneumonia is an infection of the lung that due to obstruct, partial obstruction of foreign body that it will lead to disturbing the cilia. You know the cilia? We took the cilia and push the mucus and bacteria up to take it off. So it will be disturbing in the cilia movement. That leads to a complication of the mucus and bacteria, so we have the medium. The second thing, the edema and this lung atelectasis. About the atelectasis, it's a collapse of lung. Or you can, or alveoli, uh, this collapse because of the uh, foreign body obstruction, you can have partial collapse or complete collapse. Uh, you can see here the cemental group 2 and we have here alveoli. This collapse will prevent the change of airway, airway to come. And the air is present in this will be will be uh, will be consumed by the artery after time. So, this uh, alveoli will shrink, and this shrinking will cause negative, which will lead to edema. Will lead to edema, and uh, this is one type of edema I'm going to talk about. This collapse uh, after we take the foreign uh, body up, we can treat it with physiotherapy to get the uh, alveoli expanded again. Edema, what's edema? It's a, co a complication, fluid interstitial, as we know. There's two types of edema. Uh, airway edema, or simple edema, we can say, and the other type, alveolar edema. Simple edema can happen in the bronchioles or in the trachea. That's inflammatory response. Inflammatory response from your body. In our inflammatory response, you have redness, heat, uh, pain, and also edema. So uh, this uh, another type of the edema is the alveolar edema. And alveolar edema is the same because of the uh, obstruction, partial obstruction of the alveoli. I tell you now, list for my brother. Okay, now we're going to discuss the biochemical changes. First, I'm going to talk about asphyxia, then about hypoxia, after that cyanosis, and finally respiratory acidosis. In case of an obstruction airway, the, su the supply of oxygen to the alveoli will be uh, decreased. That, that, uh, that's why the alveolar partial pressure of the oxygen will be decreased. On the other hand, the alveolar partial pressure of carbon dioxide 
will be increased. That what? Gas exchange or alveolar ventilation will be decreased or impaired in severe cases. And this is what we call asphyxia. Because asphyxia is a condition, is a condition of severely de deficient supply of oxygen to the body that arises from not being able to breathe normally. And then asphyxia will cause generalized hypoxia, which will affect the uh, uh, primary, the tissues, and organs. Actually, the difference, or the main difference between hypoxia and asphyxia is that asphyxia is a state of embed oxygen transfer between the alveoli and the blood. So it's arise from the lung. It's a problem in the ventilation itself. While hypoxia is a state of deficient oxygen transfer in the tissue. When the uh, concentration of the carbon dioxide, when the concentration of the oxygen in the uh, blood reach to 85% or lower, or when the deoxyhemoglobin concentration would be 5 gram per deciliter or more, that mean, uh, then the patient will develop cyanosis. Cyanosis, as we can define it, is a blurry discoloration, especially for the skin and mucous membrane that arises from high concentration of deoxyhemoglobin in the blood. Also, another condition that will uh, accompany asphyxia is respiratory acidosis. Respiratory acidosis is a medical condition in which decreased respiration causes increase, increase blood CO2 and decreased pH. As you can see in the acid-based balance equation, when the CO2 concentration in the blood increase, the equation will shift to the right. And that means more uh, hydrogen ions will be reduced and the pH of the blood will decrease. There are many complications uh, of the uh, respiratory, uh, respiratory acidosis that we're going to discuss in our next uh, biochemistry lecture, inshallah. One of the uh, one of the respiratory acidosis complications that we took in one of the previous biochemistry lectures is Bohr's effect, which is a state of increased CO2 concentration and decreased pH that will, cause, that will lead to an decreased affinity of oxygen in the blood. As we can see, in the, in the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation, uh, dissociation uh, here, if you look at the, if you look here at the plateau uh, part of the curve, we can see that in case of oxygen, in the case of the uh, oxygen is decreased in the uh, blood, the curve will shift to the right. That means that the uh, alveolar, uh, the alveolar, alveolar partial pressure of the oxygen uh, will be decreased. Thus, the, uh, the oxygen will not be able to alter the hemoglobin from the T state, which has a, a reduced affinity of oxygen, to the R state, which has an increased affinity of oxygen. And that's why the oxygen hemoglobin in the blood will increase, and it will cause hypoxia, and the oxygen hemoglobin concentration reach 5 gram per deciliter, and the patient will develop cyanosis, and then respiratory acidosis. Okay. Now I will talk about the brain pain of the, this case. It is uh, may, uh, it's known as bronchoscopy. Bronchoscopy is a technique of visualizing the inside of airways, diagnostic and uh, therapeutic approach. Uh, the bronchoscopy is a device that uh, insert in our uh, airways to detect the, the foreign bodies uh, inside the, where, 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 is it, where it is uh, stuck in our airways. Uh, a bronchoscopy is a device used to see the inside, the inside of the lungs. It can be flexible. Uh, there is two types of uh, bronchoscopy. One is flexible. It's uh, longer and thinner than the rigid body. Uh, the, uh, the rigid uh, 
There is two type, uh, there is two way to insert this uh, bronchoscopy. One from mouth, or the other one is from nose. To see the foreign body where it's located inside our airways. The scope pass uh, through your mouth, uh, through your uh, wine and then into your lungs. A rigid bronchoscopy requires a general anesthesia, you will be asleep. So the uh, patient will not uh, move and uh, disturb us for in to see the foreign body where it's stuck. Uh, local anesthesia is used to relax the thoracic muscles to help us to uh, go inside more and see where the, the foreign body is stuck in the airway. Now I will uh, show you a video that uh, will uh, explain all of this. As you can see, this is the endoscope inside, uh, the, inside the airways, and this is the car carina and this two membrane guy. He will, inside, uh, he will uh, go inside this one to see if there are the foreign body here or there. So he he is going, and this is the foreign body. This, as you can see, it's stuck inside the main bronchi, one of the main bronchi. It's stuck here, and uh, then we'll use uh, forceps or something with uh, the endoscope to re release this uh, foreign body from this and pull out uh, the foreign body uh, out of the airways to make the patient feel good. And now I will uh, give the short. Uh, the first stage of foreign body aspiration. Before doing anything, and because the recognition is the key of successful outcome, it's important to ask the victim, are you shocking? This is at least if the victim who is conscious and able to speak or respond in violence. Now when I know the victim is conscious, I will do the first thing. First step is divided in two main parts, hemolytic maneuver and airborne. Public maneuver, we can do it for adult or children. For adults, here my friend, we will show how to do it. The first thing, if the victim is coughing, encourage him to continue coughing. The second thing, make a fist, put the thumb inside, at the level of diaphragm between the navel and the lower part of the chest, Make the victim in the stand position. Uh, pull the, uh, the victim inward and upward at the same time. Like this. 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 Like Turn the infant face down, like the infant face down, and the uh, four look for uh, four up. Put the chest in front on the four arm and uh, make a head downward rather uh, lower down the body. <coughs> now give a five quick forceful looks behind. Uh, between the infant shoulder, between the infant shoulder, use the heel of your free arm. Now turn the, the infant face up, place two fingers on the middle of breastbone, just below the navel, and give up five quick thrust, five quick thrust, compressing the, the chest. Continue this procedure, five quick uh, back blows and five quick uh, chest thrust until the object is dislocated or the, the infant is uh, become unconscious. Now remove the object with your finger if you can see it. 
the last one in the first day before anybody aspiration in ambulance. Did the ambulance don't have anything to do, only give the medical oxygen, not to go to the hospital and do the surgery. Thank you, thank you very much. Okay, uh, in our case, how we can connect it, the clinical scenario with what we have studied before? Because in the hospital, you will find something like this, and there is a patient, and there is something happened to the patient, and you have to do things to know and how uh, you have to know what happened to him. Like here, we have. How we can know or how we can understand our case and what happened to his or to him. Here he returned to his normal uh, or before. The child turned blue during the episode. That means he had a sinus. Uh, he has a sinus. So sinus. Yes. He has a sinus. Also, he returned to his normal activity shortly after the episode occurred. So what's that mean? It means the foreign body has shifted and now he has a partial obstruction. And there is a partial obstruction. Here also, but science, but, uh, but since then, he has had a few intermittent cough displays. Coughing reflection uh, have been why? Because it's trying to remove the foreign body from the track. Or what? Um, here there is, a, a sweet, uh, there is a wheezing part on the left side of the chest, which is mean uh, there is a narrow uh, in the airway, indicate, uh, indicated a narrow in airway uh, in the left side of the chest. This maybe can help us to know how we can uh, use uh, the, how we can use what we learn with our clinical case. After that, as a diagnosis for the patient, we do a chest X-ray to locate it exactly where is the foreign body. After that, we can do maybe we can call it a surgical, as my friend said, it's bron uh, bronchoscopy to uh, take out or to remove the foreign body from where is it. After that, the patient will uh, take overnight in the hospital to avoid any complication that can happen to him. And the next day, he can leave the hospital and he can be a normal, inshallah. At the end, I hope that uh, you learned something from us. And in kan, in kan sawabam fa min Allah, in kan khatam fa min nahum shaytan. Wa na'ithadir an ya'ala ta'ala wa shawar.
اول برونكا هتطلع من البوستيريو سيرفس اول برونكا هتطلع من البوستيريو سيرفس يعني من الخلف هتروح لي من ابو بيزا برونكو بالمونرا سيجمنت زي ما انتوا عارفين برونكو بالمونرا سيجمنت بتاعت الرايت لاون فكركم فيها ادي الميد بلو في الميد يعني اللاترا برونكو بالمونرا سيجمنت الابر لو بتجيب الابر او ايبيكال برونكو بالمونرا سيجمنت and then anterior bronchopalmonary segment and then posterior bronchopalmonary segment. The lower lobe will get the ego basal. And then the posterior basal. And the anterior basal. And then the lateral basal and then the medial basal. This is the bronchopalmonary segment of the right part. فأول برونكو بالمونا سيجمنت طالعة من الأنتيريو سيرفيس هتروح لهذا الميدل لو أول برونكا طالعة من البوستيريو سيرفيس هتروح للإيكو بيتا برونكو بالمونا سيجمنت البرونكو بالمونا سيجمنت اللي هون كونتينوس وذا رايت برونكا هتروح لي
اخذ العيان مختار اكثر العيان عندنا في في مصر كده اول واحد يصور يجي واحد قايم ومد له بوكس بين الاثنين سكابر من ضهر الاخر. This is another maneuver. لكن عيان should lean forward and I should press five times pressure على الايه؟ a blow in the intra-scapular region. This may help the patient. لانه انت عارف انا بخبط السبينال كو الكارتيبرا كو ده الكارتيبرا كو من السوفيدس وقدام السوفيدس مين؟ تراكيبا فده برضه المفروض قبل ما اعمل الايه؟ شكرا ما تكلمش بقى لان انت بتشرح لي المانوفر دي بتاعتك اناتوميكال ازاي دي هلت هي المانوفر انا مش عارف ان هي بس هتفضل مش عارف ان هي مش بقى عايز اعرف انا الدوميكال ده ليه البوزيشن ده وليه المانوفر؟ يعني بعد انا هو بتاع اوكي؟ اذا احد البيشنت نفس اخذ شيء كبير هيوج يعني ديبيندز السايز وير اتس جان ستوب ان ريسبيرتوري سيستم هذا شيء مهم. Another thing is you know the position of the patient. The patient can nine on a button or the patient was standing, the patient was sleeping in the stomach, this is another important thing. But then the age of the patient, is it baby, is it baby, is it uh, adult? This is also very important. But then what I'm gonna talk about is, is anatomy of the trachea help us detect or yani, expect where the uh, the uh, the uh, object can be. So let us have a cool experience. Expect where the where the structure is. Let let it in how the cool let it look at. Let let why do we do this? Why is this? Let not expectations. Is that it? Sensor compression. Exactly. عشان we want to make quick actions. As you said, as half of our X-ray is not always cannot always detect. And this is true. If the object is really small, you can't detect. But patients can have the symptoms, and you don't know what's going on. So bronchoscope is the best way to to, to detect. As I have been reminded, the patients that go everywhere and in uh, in his uh, lung, I should expect some locations. So uh, I have uh, two comments 